Good night, everyone. It is 8 o'clock, and that means this just in. I am the Justin of this Justin, Justin Marvel. And tonight we have a very, very, very special episode with a very, very special guest. And as you know, all of our guests beforehand have a connection to Barbados, but this is not a connection. This guy is Barbadian. I am talking none, none than the king, than of, the king of Swing, Darian King, Darian himself. king himself. Good night, Darian. Good night, Darian I'm, 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 I'm good. I'm good. good. I'm good. I'm good. Glad to be here, man. Really, really, man. really you guys, you guys, guys getting me on this show. A lot of people might not have known, but you took a break off tour to deal with that troublesome wrist of yours. You know, you've had some trouble with that left wrist over the years. Um, so how did surgery go, first of all? Uh, uh, for me, hearing from the doctors, it, it sounded successful. Um, they told me that it was synovitis, which is a lot of information and stuff wrapped around the wrist. And it was restricting my wrist and the range of motion was very tough. So on the backhand side, it was giving me a lot of problems. But um, finally, um, I took the time off because thinking that I have so much time, hope, hopefully, in this, in this tennis career that I can get better and still come back stronger. So after making that big decision, obviously, with my coach and my friends and my family, um, gladly is the right decision. Um, it's improving day by day. Um, with a lot of help from the physios, um, it's Carol Pearson, it's Ayanna Critch, who actually done the, the surgery for me. Um, Marita Marshall, who assisted from before, from way before. And I'm really happy for, to, for those guys to be in my corner. So, I mean, I guess you can say I don't want to make light of a very bad situation, but the pandemic came to, in a way, give you time yeah. to, to recover. Yeah, uh, it's a blessing. I look at it as, um, as, as you know, I was in a lot of pain. Um, my last match that I played, I mean, really professionally, I mean, and taking it all up on the court was since November last year. And from then, I had a lot of problems, as, as you know, and I mean, this stuff happened. I can only count it as a blessing. So now it gives me time to, to recover and to... You know what I mean? Get back, try to get back to the top of my game and keep working hard. And I mean, I've got some time for myself too to, to work on some stuff. So I'm really happy that, well, not obviously with the, with the pandemic stuff, but really happy that I got the time off to, to, to really recap. Um, we've got news that the ATP plans to resume um, August 14th, I think, at a tournament that you're accustomed to. You've played it already. The city open in Washington D.C. I'm, I'm certain. A lot of fans I know, and me myself included, I don't even know the answer to this question. I'm going to ask you: Are you planning to return for the rest of the year? Um, in my thoughts, yeah, definitely. I would love to. Um, it's it's really hard to tell right now at the moment because just coming off of the surgery, you feel instant relief, but then you don't want to go right into jump right into it, and then. You know what I mean? It, it reoccurs. So, for me, definitely, that's my goal. I, as I told you, this I want to be the first person there at the tournament when F tennis um, resumes. And I'm working really hard towards it, as I told you, with my physios and stuff. And that's, as you said, that's the first tournament back. And I hope that I'll be 100% for it. I don't want to be, you know, the Debbie donor here, but I know personally your favorite tournament is the U.S. Open. And I'm sure you've heard in news they have there won't be any qualifying draws this year, which means in all likelihood that you won't get to play U.S. Open for the first time in, what, like four years now, Darren? Or yeah. five years, sorry? Five years, um, yeah, pretty much, yeah. So I have to ask, like, how do you feel? Because, I mean, that is your tournament. How, how do you feel about that? I mean, as I told you, we have time. Once I get back into the, to the stride, meaning with the first tournament back, and I, you know what I mean, get back in my body into the access of how professional it is, and I mean, playing, playing back tournaments around the top players again. I think definitely, as you know, I'm, I'm a US Open guy, as you said. That's my, that would be definitely be my goal once I get into there. Oh, my said, apologies. So you're, you're still targeting this year? Yeah, US Open. yeah, definitely. Um, I have a few tournaments before then. You never know. It, uh, tennis is played on the day. Never know I can play one week, and especially in the city open, and, and reach pretty far. So, as I said, my goal is to basically just to be a hundred percent. And I know that once I'm there, 
up there in the hundred percent and healthy and stuff, that I have my chances increases. So I'm just that's my main goal right now to try to get back focus and try to get try to recover as fast as possible so that I can get back out there to to compete again. Oh, taking the tournament away from you already. If you do get to that US Open and obviously all of Barbados and the rest of the world is hoping that is the case. How do you think you're going to be able to fear in a bubble scenario that is being, is being presented right now by the organizers? Like, you know, it won't be the usual walk in the boat. Uh, fans, I think Darian just dropped out. Um, we'll wait for him uh, to see if we can get him back. Hopefully, Neil can either call him or uh, see if I can have him back to the, to, to the phone call. So please just give us a moment. Ah, yes, Darian's back here. Hey, sorry about that. Sorry about the connection. Oh, no worries, Darren. Uh, trust me, we have a running joke on this show. I think it's me, Justin Dropout. So, to say, when, when will Justin drop out? So, that's just a, a Monday night you go for us. I think it take over your place. <laughs> so, I was asking, Darren, um, if you do make that US Open, how do you fear in a bubble situation that the organizers are pre presented to make sure a messy pandemic that people aren't infected and don't spread the virus? How will you fear in that bubble eight scenario? Uh, for me, I think that obviously the tournament it will be definitely be working hard to keep obviously the players safe, uh, not to put them at risk. Um, I think as as you saw in for the for the grand slam, they're trying to put these players into spread out the players into one hotel and. Obviously, the, the players have to come, come together as a council, obviously, and to make the right decision. Um, as you can see, there's a lot of controversy in, with, with the players, with, like, as you can see, with Sergios and, and Zverev. And people are getting very disturbed about the situation right now. So I think the players have to come together as a council to make this, this important decision. Um, because as you, as you can see, like, I guess, like, as in Sergios, he, how he's looking at it is, yeah, the players that the players first, and which is true because you don't want to go up there and get the COVID. So right now, I don't think that he's thinking about the the, the sponsors and all that stuff. He's worrying about the players. Once I think that it would be, it would make it easier for everyone to be on the same page. Everyone can follow the the protocols that they were set to, for the tournament to continue. So as I say, you have to wait on the. The decision, the players have to come together. Um, but if if it has to happen, not sure the way how they will work it. But you know, as I say, it's, it's a decision they have to come together to make. I'm glad you've mentioned Zverev. I know that he holds a very special place in your heart. Place in your heart that allows me to segue into 27 historic run at your favorite tournament, US Open. Up. Let's go through that because I mean it was a special time for me. I don't know if you I know if you. No, but I hold it dear to my heart. And as I said, yes, I mean, because without you, I would not have seen a lot of the things I've seen in the tennis world. I wouldn't even understand professional sports as well as I do now. Yeah. So let's go. Like, let's, let's start. Like, you get to the U.S. Open. Like, run me through your qualifying round. Qualifying round. Well, first, I must say, Jess, I must thank you for, for really believing in me to taking that trip down there. Because obviously, as you said, you didn't know about the profession, uh, the, the profession sport, meaning tennis. And you took the time out to, to really believe in me to come on there and watch me. And to, I didn't know what made you believe in me so much that even seeing you there made me believe in myself more. I want, to know, I want you to know, Darren, I'm not sure if you remember the article. I went as far as to write, I think it's after Wimbledon, saying, <laughs> yeah, that, yeah. saying that there is, without yeah, a shadow yeah. of a doubt, Yes, the next tournament that we came will be qualifying. That's why you I, said you had you had you had it all. In. So <laughs> I must thank you first because you made me you made me tell you yeah you you put me into place. It was like, are you joking around? You need you need to get in these these, and that's what I think. That's what I think. That's what a lot of Caribbean stuff see the fun, they see the fun, the energy around you, and that's why I'm really glad for for the people that surround me. Um, yeah, about the about. U.S. Open, as you know, I really, I don't know why, for me, it makes me train extra hard. I don't know why. Like, I put in extra hours before the tournament. I, as I tell you, I don't know. Maybe the energy, the city, I don't know. But 
I guess it's because of my mom too, because that's the first time I think she ever watched me play tennis, coming to the U.S. Open Juniors, and I think that's why I made it my my favorite tournament, and I put all up for it. So I as I don't know, maybe that's the reason I play extra hard. I I go for it, and but yeah, U.S. Open was at that time was. I was always close. I was always at the tip. I never got over the hurdle. And 2017, uh, Chris and I put in a lot of work before U.S. Open. Uh, they- I don't want to cut you here, right? But I must admit something. There was one time I did openly root for you to lose a match. <laughs> and that your your last round qualifying match to get him main draw. And I'm like... Yeah, because you're solid. I, solid. I, I think I can... Yeah, you Lucas was Res- Lucas Rasol, and I'm like, I didn't know you wanted me to do. I think that's remember because all of these times as a professional, you remember all these times that you had chances. But yeah. I'm like, this boy can't right honestly there, get what. in. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't that's no funny. way. <laughs> There's no way this man is going to get into his first ever main draw, and I'm back home in Barbados. I'm not there to see some like some like I have my fingers crossed. Darren who's here against Rasol. So I'm going to hop. I remember when you lost, huh? I kid you not, Darren. I put everything in place immediately after to make sure that I was on that that flight to go to New York. On the surface, too, I was very close and I never even play on. So that was, yeah, that was weird. But, yeah, as I told you, U.S. Open is the place. I will always try my best to to get into those main draws of U.S. Open. And... was a special place in my heart is the great city, good energy. And every year I will definitely always try to push to get into US Open. So I'm hoping now, fingers crossed, that I get back on tour as it begins. Hopefully it starts back and I wanna get I wanna get those wings up again so that I can get it get into it. Then you leave this twenty seventeen US Open just yet. I remember your second round match against Nicholas Jerry. I think to me that was the best I've ever seen you play. I don't know if you feel that way, but I think it was almost as flawless a performance I have ever seen on the end. But then there was a match, your final round qualifying match, and you're down a set and a break to Lucas Lacko, it was, right? Yes. Yes, Lucas Lacko, Slovenia, yeah. At that point, like, you're down a set, you're down a break. How do you come back from that? Like, in, at no point in time did you think you were going to lose here again? For me, no. I... Uh, at that point, I was so engaged in it on the court that losing for me wasn't an option at that point. I was doing everything on the court. I had cut all on my knees. I had holes in my shoes. So at that time, when I, especially knowing me, I know when I, I'm a guy that pushed, that it's very hard for me to start and, and to, to beat me. So even down a set in the break, I was just telling myself, just don't give up. And... I finally got back one break, and that's when I saw, like, you know what I mean, at, on the court that things changed around. Um, he was feeling a little fatigued. You can see it. and Because at that time, he was playing very good tennis. I don't think that I was doing much wrong because, obviously, you have different opponents. And obviously maybe the, the round before I played, it was Jerry, who was a big serve and big forehand, and I had to do much more running. But he was a little bit more constrained. Uh, consistent and constructive of his point. So, different game styles, and I think I took too long to recognize his game style and his game plan. Luckily, that's what you have. That's, that's why I'm glad that they included the talk to your coach at the NBC. Yeah. Break. But as you can see in the first couple of matches, I didn't because I kind of figured out what to do. But that was the first time playing Lucas Laco, and obviously, he was a top 40 player, I, I was thinking before and obviously much more experience and stuff so I think he was beating me mostly on the experience well I don't think I was playing as badly but I just didn't give up and when I got back that break I just saw the momentum shifted and I was really happy for that and I saw it I picked on it I jumped on it I jumped on the opportunity and as soon as I won that second set I knew that I was too engaged to, to lose that that third set take us to the moment where you finally qualify for the main draw. I can tell you how I felt, but viewers are not on here to hear about Justin Marvel at him, Marvel at him, <laughs> breaking down, crying, but so to that I, moment. I, I, uh, it was, it was, 
Yeah, it was. I was so excited. Like I couldn't even. I couldn't even find tears. I didn't even know why. I was just so excited. Like I could have ran at that time. I could have played seven out of ten sets. I didn't know why at that point. Um, but yeah, it was. It was a crazy moment. It was the best moment, obviously, of my life. Um, something that I really pushed towards. I always told people, even in the interviews and in your guys' interviews that US Open is, is the place that I really want to be and to actually qualify was was that sad for me. So definitely that's one that would keep definitely in my books. I still have the pictures and stuff for me in in the household and you know what I mean it's it's a memory I will never forget. I can tell you I never forget it. Because one if you look back at my book for that last game that you were serving out the match, I can't like my hand writing it's already illegible as it is. I do, but, my, I but my hand's shaking. My hand, like, like shit, I can't get a word written properly because I can't believe, like, I'm there at this moment. Yeah. And Jamil, you can remember my photographer, Jamil. He could tell you, yeah. like, afterwards, where, like, I think I squeezed life out of Marita, if I, if I can remember correctly. Probably never forgave me for that level of hug. And, <laughs> and I remember going back to, to Arthur Ashe to write the story, and I did a live. And the tears are just coming. They can't form words either because, I, you know, you've seen, I've seen you as a junior winning um, ITF junior tournament here in Barbados. Yeah. Right up, yeah. right up to this moment. So, you know, this is a through of building on and something that I had the, the, the privilege yeah. of watching all these years. So, that's what I said. You, that's what I said. You, you backed me full way, just. I, well, me. so I now. It was crazy because for you to come and like, obviously I knew like before, like, but you come in and say, yo, Darry, I bought this thing. I was out of work. I, I'm going to US Open. I don't care what they tell me and that kind of stuff. That support kind of, it boosts me. And, I, and I, I, you, I, you, because as you can see, because as you can see, you were there at the tournament. You were there at every practice and you can see, you can tell the guys about people's entourages. It was like, it, people have like five and six. It's just normally be me and Chris walking to the, me and my coach because I don't know if people know. Yeah, walking to the <laughs> course and we are there trying to get practices in and people holding people back. But that that was. But to you there and you're taking pictures and you're watching every practice. Obviously, I feel like yeah, this is a team, and I really enjoy that, and it, it boosts me to be honest. Not more than me. Like as I said, I would never have been at the U.S. Open without covering you and as we were talking about entourages huh? you see yeah. these things on tv you know the practice courts obviously the top guys get the big practice courts right next to yeah to arthash arthash so i'm standing at our and darren i hear this mob pass me what's going on here right eh? and they look around and they hear this girl shout so it's like rafa passing behind me <laughs> Diane, Diane, I want to tell you, I never. There were like fifty people that swarming around Rafa as he walks past to go any players' lounge, right? Yeah. Like, exactly. This exactly. how you, this, this how you know that you've made. <laughs> that's why. That's why. Hopefully soon, that I'll be the Rafa. People will be swarming. <laughs> okay. I won't get to that main draw match. No, I don't know if it's gonna bring up painful memory, memories for you, but that's what on no. Monday night. Prime time match against then I think world number four Zverev. Take me take me through the match. Yeah. Yeah. Well uh, crazy hearing when the draw came out. I was out at dinner with my agent Helen, Chris, uh Kevin, one of my best friends, and someone called, I can't remember, maybe my other best friend Brandon Burr, who came to support and he was like, Yo, you see who you have to play in that. Because, as you know, I'm a guy that says, don't look at the draw. Whoever you bring, I just want to play. But obviously, hearing number four, Alexander is, you were like, oh, how you feel and all that kind of stuff. Me, I didn't know. In my heart, I was, I was, like, I was so excited. Because for me, I, I'm, I'm the guy that loves to perform in front of people. I don't know why. I don't know where I got it from. But I, maybe I give the credit to my parents because I'm young. My father, customs officer, he had to do a lot of speeches in front of 
crows and stuff. So when his birthdays and stuff in the, in the household, he makes us like talk in front of everyone. So I think that growing up, it was it was it seemed easy to me. So then they were like, "Yeah, on Arthur Ashe, which is the biggest stadium against in tennis and that kind of stuff." I was, I was like, "Yeah," I was like, "Chris, this is what." I don't know. I don't know why people thought I would have been nervous, but I was ready. I could have played the next day at that point. And as you can tell, inside of the match, inside of the first set, I was like, "Wasn't coming out there joking around." They're joking around. But well, I'm glad. I, Sorry, go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. Go. Yeah, you go. No, I'm glad you brought up that first set because you know I keep telling everyone that is the first set you should have won, and who knows yes. what happens. Yes, I, yeah. I must say, I think experience beat me. I've gotten the best of me. Um, because obviously, Miss Miss Zverev has played on that court maybe a bunch of times, and obviously in front of that crowd, and he's played those caliber of players over and over with his feather and stuff. But even if people would say that he took it easy on me, I'm, I guarantee you, even. Me winning that first set, I don't think that he would be thinking like that in his mind. Because no. to me, how I was playing, I was very happy and very competitive in that in that match. And I guess with the experience, if I continue, hopefully, God's will that I can keep playing that way and keep pushing and keep working out hard. I get back at that level that I can continue playing those guys at that level. I hope that. I hope. I, I, yeah, I think. I. I'm a guy I believe in myself. I will be up there competing my butt off for the rest of my life up there at that level. I don't want to ask, but I have to. And I've never asked you about it. What happened? What were you thinking on that forehand that, that caught the top of yeah. That caught the top yeah. that, was, that was after a long rally. A long, that was like, I think, a 30-something ball rally on set point. And I was pretty strong in it, but... Fatigue got me. Fatigue, uh, it, it got me. That's the truth. Um, we are both moving side to side, but that's that's what they're good at. They're, they're, that's where they're top four and stuff in the world. They have that mentality that they can go the extra way. And I was not accustomed to it. Uh, as I told you, the experience, they, they know when to prolong points. They know when to sharpen the points. And this is the best of five. This is, well, we play it once a year during David Scott, but this is now the best of five. And after, like, I'm actually like, and real pressure and stuff is built around and because that day this guy don't really feel a lot of pressure um, but this is this is what you work for and this is what you dream this is what you dream of you, and for me then I missed that shot even the double I think you for, even forgot yeah I forgot the double four actually double four actually I, but if, that that sucked everything out of me everything but, meaning everything but, meaning I think that I started to think about that pretty much a lot. That, that I think that really caused me the, the first set. But I still tried to get, I kept in there, I kept battling. I think at that point that that would be my first five sets five set match if I had pretty much won the, the sets. If if it was if I had gone that far. Because I was so the adrenaline through me was just up to all. All. I could have, even when I finished the match, I didn't go to sleep till six in the morning. I mean, obviously, so I had a race story. That's right, how high my agenda was. That's why I know that if I get it, I would be, I'll be thirsty. I'll be thirsty when I get it there. Thirsty when I get it there. But um, it was a great match. It was a great experience for me. Taking nothing away from Zverev, he's an unbelievable player. As you know, that he has beaten the top guys before. And he's always in the contest now about trying to win in a Grand Slam. He's only 23, which is unbelievable. And, yeah, I'm really happy that I gave him a run. But hopefully next time when I get into those positions that I improve and I know what to do. So every day is a work in progress. Uh, you work towards that goal. And just hoping next time when it gets there that it doesn't happen again. That U.S. Open was it special only on your behalf, though. Um, your good friend Sloane Stevens, I think that was her breakthrough Grand Slam title, yeah. and yeah. and I do in her box like more than once. Um, 
having that close relationship and being with somebody like with Sloan that you grew up with, how was that to have, to have seen like you know first time to see her win her only Grand Slam? How how was that? I I think that I could have cried in that one because for what Sloan has done to me throughout my whole career, um, I give her a lot of I I thank her so much that I sometimes I don't even know how to thank her. Um, she brought me into her home at age of twelve. Um, practices, introduced me to a lot of people, obviously, to, to keep, to raise my level. Uh, obviously, playing with her raised raise my level also, and she's a sister to me, definitely. Um, as I told you, she's helped me tremendously, um, even with finances, trying to travel, trying to find coaches, hitting with her. Um, for her to, to, to sit there and record that moment right now is, is unbelievable for me. Uh, she's a hard worker. And I, I didn't even know what to tell her after the match, to be honest. Um, I could have, as I told you, I, that's when I could have cried. Like, I don't even think me making the main guard, like, I was just, I started running around for the energy to adrenaline. But her winning that, because um, then you watch someone grow up and seeing her putting all this work and with all the, the struggles and like it's it's crazy that she she managed to go through all that stuff and to still I think it's her first Grand Slam yeah first Grand her Grand Slam to, to win that Grand Slam title. I think it's important to her too I think she's mentioned in her interview um it's crazy and yeah a lot of trends a lot of struggles obstacles she over she overcame to 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 pull out that victory uh, she played her friends which is obviously very tough to do. Madison Keys and those guys, girls that she normally practice with, and is I'm very happy for her, and hopefully that I would, I obviously still keep in contact with her, and I'm hoping that she's continuing her journey of pushing hard, and hopefully that wherever her goal is set, I'm there to try to assist, and hopefully that she wins many more, she wins many more events. As we're on Sloan. there was one rumor I always wanted to clear up with you. <laughs> 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 I am that when she had first beat Serena, I think it was at an Australian Open years in front. Yes, that 2013, 2013, I think, yeah. Sydney. Um, her coach then uh, became in Roger Smith, right? Yes. I heard it was hell for, like, for him to get through to her. And rumor yeah. has it, has it, that Roger Smith turned to you and said, I want you to take her down a notch. I was told you gave her a double bagel. Is there any bagel? Is there any truth to this? Good truth. Good truth. Good truth. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, uh, as, as I can tell you, me and Roger Smith are close. It's very close. Um, obviously, he's someone that we idolize. Uh, if, if we come, if we put Bahamas into the Caribbean, but which is not. Yeah, there, Darian. Um, we seem to have connectivity issues, Darian. Again, are you there, Darian? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So go ahead. So sorry, I, I didn't hear you for a second there. Yes, he turned Sloan in from that. Yeah, I can continue. Yeah, he turned Sloan from that caterpillar into the butterfly. Um, he was there throughout everything, everything, the ups, the downs, and he molded her. And he comforted her at the, at the bad times, and he lifted her at the good times. And as a as for a coach, that's obviously your role. But he's, I think that he even at one point looked at him as like a father figure. Like she listened. Well, obviously, you know, you still have your downs and and that stuff. But for me, I was just there. You know, what I mean, playing along, playing the part. Ah, I'm just a brother, but. Obviously, the coach who experienced it before, obviously, she would listen to most of the time. But he only did that to, for me to jump on her because... She was losing concentration. Hello? Yeah, Darren, I'm still here. 
he thought that he thought that she was losing concentration at some points at some important practices and stuff. And which is bad for me because obviously it feels like I'm giving that on my sister, but I started to understand the game where he was starting to come where where he was coming from and it was a big help to her. Uh, changed her attitude, changed how she improved and started to improve men. Watching her through is fantastic. We're losing you, Darren. I'm not we're not we're barely hearing you now and we've lost visual. Hello? Hello? Yeah, I'm, I can hear you now, but I'm not seeing you, Darren. Hello? 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 I can still hear you, but I, we've lost visual. Lost visual. Hello? Ah, there yeah. you are. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. No problem. Right. Yeah. Don't want to. Sorry. Go ahead. Sorry. Sorry. Go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, as you told you, that's watching her grow and her putting in the hard work was. When she won that Grand Slam, that's why we always say hard work always pays off. So I was very happy and I'm very happy for her and I hope that she continues on the path of training to be very, the one of the best in the world. You don't get to say Sloane Stevens as this answer. So Darren, when I ask you, put you on the spot. Who, well, she's younger than you, I believe. Who was your favorite player that you idolized growing up as a kid, growing up as a kid? That is that is a very good question. I was one of those guys that tried to copy a lot of players, meaning in the right ways, meaning like say Federer's serve, um, Songa's forehand, uh, movement of Novak Djokovic. I don't think that I can pick. I was just one of those guys that look at the strength of all the players and try to mold it into my game. Um, but I would still give the edge to Guy Monkey. Very excited, very excited player to watch. Uh, movement was impeccable. Um, crowd entertainer. And yeah, I would say that I, mo I would mostly lean on Guy Monkeys. I don't want to keep you much longer. So, how how do you feel first playing in the Olympics, and as a Barbadian player, I know it's a bit difficult. How do you balance, you know, representing the country, something I know that you love, but of, but also, you know, protecting your, your, your interests on tour? Um, representing my country obviously comes first because it is your country and they're, they're assisting me to, to where I am right now. Um, Yes, without them, I don't think that I would be here right now playing tennis. As you know, tennis is a very financial sport, and I'm really thankful for what the BOA, the Barbados Tennis Association, sponsors who have assisted me before flow. I can go down the whole line and the cost right now at the back then was Didi Badu and Lotto. And yeah, I can go through the whole list. Um, but yeah, that's this is the time that I guess I can shout out everyone and I really appreciate them. So, representing my country comes first on the list. So, every time there's con country duty, um, I want to be the first on the list. I want to say when they, when they pick the team that they see, not even the captain that they see there in the team. Um, and my father always put that in my head. I don't know why he loved it. I guess I don't know because they just got finally came to Barbados and you finally saw like competitive tennis and professional uh, professionally and stuff so um i really enjoy it um i take it and i put that first and i'm really happy for, for what we've done especially in david Scott, because that's the elite right now that's the top of the country and really happy for what we've done david Scott. me representing barbados in the olympics Obviously, a dream. Receiving that ball thing, yeah. I mean, to represent the country there, I could, yeah, it would be great feeling. Be more blessed to progress the progress. I don't know who else has done that. I think even if, I think even in for tennis. I didn't hear that last part, Darren. 
people who have even done that in the career for tennis for, for this profession. So, I mean, I was ecstatic and luckily I got to the United States. As I told you, you can see how I told you you can see how serious they take it because if not, they can cut off the, the used to go up there. That's 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 obviously. Not we're not hearing you very well, Darren. Hello. Yeah, your audio is cutting in and out. So sorry. Um. Yeah, I was saying that. Yeah, you can see that those guys take it serious. So why do you have anything that I should be out there not representing my country? If not, they can they can stop to go and play masters in somewhere but you can see that they show their respect to their country and which is which is very good and i show a lot of respect also so i'm i'm very happy and to, to represent Barbados in the olympics and that's on the list but it was on the list i i mean that is marked off the list but i didn't get it i didn't get it how I wanted to get it, meaning that my full potential competing at my highest and being healthy. So definitely, hopefully, that's one thing I'm pushing for also to represent for the Olympic. Well, thanks um, for, I mean, I have a million questions I can ask you, but we are running out of time, they're running out of time, Darren, and they want us to come on the show. Um, do know when you start back that we hopefully would love to have you either at the city either at the City Open, or even better yet, U.S. Open Live. So again, thank you so much for coming on the show, Darren. And as I said, when you get back on tour, let's give us a show. Thank you very much, guys. I really appreciate it. Thank you for getting me back out there. Always, Darren, I'm man. Not, I'm not finished yet. <laughs> That's the reason why we have you on the show. We know that you're not finished yet. <laughs> finished yet. Thank you. I really appreciate it, guys. All right. Good night, man. Thank you. All right, as Darian segues out, and we need for Marsha and Neil to join us, just give us a quick break, and we'll be coming right back, um, less than a minute, and we'll talk, uh, I think we're talking WNBA, um, NFL, and the West Indies tour to England to finish off. So give us a quick break, and we'll be back with you just shortly. 